All right, welcome back, Cherry Blossom family. It is another Friday. We are here with Friday and Friends. Just thought we'd do a little different. Uh, we're a little zoomed out, you know. I'm sure you are too. <laughs> so we we got my boy here, Justin. Justin Heyman. He is a loan officer with PRMG, that is Paramount Residential Mortgage Group. Um, his office is in the DMV out of Northern Virginia. Uh, and he's going to tell us a little bit about, you know, we've been talking lately, every, all people, business people, uh, the workers, what have you, homeowners, potential buyers. Uh, real estate market is hot right now. It seems to be unusually hot, um, especially compared to where it was. And now that that's, that has a, it's a ripple effect of COVID or what have you. So we brought a professional in here today to tell us a little bit about um, why this is that I know we don't look as professional we just came off the driving range so you know we're hanging out today uh, it's a beautiful day here in the DMV so but let's get into a little bit with Justin and then I know there's a lot of you out there who may have questions who may be thinking about moving who may be thinking about buying um, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, taking their their stimulus money or anything they've gotten and using it you know to advance their, their real estate dreams so uh, let's talk about this market. First, just let's introduce yourself. You know, thank you for coming out today. Um, tell us a little about yourself and how you got into real estate. Real estate's like a family business. Uh, I've been in real estate though. I was an agent for 10 years with Long and & Foster. And now I'm working in on another side of the business doing loans. I wanted to learn that. That's why I, I became a loan officer to work with Paramount. Okay. And why? Is this just, just wanted to change or? I want, to learn learn the whole, I want to learn the whole full spectrum of the business and, you know, the whole side of the industry. So I can have, like, experience in each part. Okay. No, that's not, that's not bad. So uh, what we're learning is, like, why is this market so hot right now? Like, why is this? Well, the market's shifted from premium being into the cities and closer living and closer quarters, more amenities to more space and the need for single family homes and you know just having your own oasis because there hasn't been the ability to travel when i hear you say that that sounds like this is another ripple effect of covid19 the surge in buying is absolutely because you have people moving from the condo that want more space you know there's a migration a re-migration back to the suburbs from the city yeah. Leaving, you know, because why pay the condo fee when you could pay the homeowners association fee and a couple others? It's probably still going to be less in a lot of cases. And you have more space and you have more peace or, you know, you don't need to commute anymore. I think it's that. I think also that some things that may factor in is that, um, you know, I, I, if I hear correctly, correctly I, if I understand correctly, millennials are probably the ones who are buying right now. They're at the age where they're starting to buy property. Probably at the age where you know they're starting to, if not have families, think about having families. And sometimes city life is not as conducive to that, or not as reflective of what they had growing up, and they well, want something that reflects more of that. Sure, I mean, and that's all well and good. There might be a lot of factors driving it, but it, what it comes down to is there's just not enough supply to fill the demand, and that's really why you see such the increase in values at sustaining levels because they're not the prices won't come down until demand is filled and demand is nowhere near being close to filled it would seem like an interesting turn of events because we we're all talking about you know how well people don't want to work and unemployment is up and blah 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 but yet like traditionally stable a healthy employment number it was kind of like a, a, a direct translation to how stable the housing market was but this seems like this this whole equation is like on its ear a little bit yeah it, it, uh, well our market also is a bit recession proof because we have a transitioning we have the federal government that comes in and out on cycles and we just have a new administration coming in and an old one leaving so you're always going to be able to bank on a changing administration sooner or later or a changing you know a changing environment with the people well uh, there's a kind of a saying that dc rents young people <laughs> it's true <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta get there, get a little job experience, get them on there, <laughs> send them someplace else in the world. But in the military as well, the military cycle too, through yeah. here, and that you have a lot of military, young, right now I see a lot of people coming to the area, the young military buyers. 
young military advice. So it's something like you said, change of administration. Um, so that, that brings new people in and, and old people out. Um, you know, sometimes with contractors, they may be, you know, my contract is here for five years, but then it's here for five years. So you're moving a whole bunch of people. There's a lot of factors. It's a very transient area here we have here. So it's kind of a unique market. Mm -hmm. um, what would, so you say that it's basically the single family home market, not like the condo market. Uh, how about like commercial? Like what, where is the hot spot here? Single family residential is definitely the hot spot. And something with a pool makes it even more of a premium. Um, but it, space is what is the premium right now. I mean, okay. people see more of a value in having land and more area to live of their own because they can't necessarily maybe count on public amenities or things to do in a city. That's true. And they, and they are nice. It's nice to have those things, but it's kind of nice to have, enjoy them when you want them and not, you know, this is just where I live. So it's just I'm forced to yeah. enjoy them, you know? And then think about it. In those new condos, you're paying for a smaller square footage and a lot of amenity shared space, rec rooms and all that stuff. Yeah, true. And if those have been closed, like, what are you really paying for? You know? That's a good point. That's a good point. So are, is, are some of these, like, most of these purchases or, or what has been happening is first homes or their second homes? It, there's all sorts of move. I, every every little bracket's hot. But for an entry first time home buyer, it's very high and over it's a high it's high in price. Um, you know, an entry level home nowadays is if you're lucky four hundred, four hundred and twenty five if you could find it. Wow. Wow. It's crazy, and I live here, and it's still like, wow, you know, I mean, I'm sure some people in other parts of the country are like, what? Like, what are you talking about, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, but, like, that all leads back to the lack of demand, and there's no new, I mean, lack of supply, and there's no new supply really being created in the single-family markets. So, you could expect further stabilization and support at this price level. Because we are seeing a lot more condos built, we're seeing apartments built, we're seeing high-rises built, but not a lot of housing communities. And maybe a lot of those opportunities are, have, have already been used here, you know? Yeah. Maybe a lot of those land tracks have already been bought up, you know, especially the ones that are immediately around, you know, D.C. or Baltimore or Annapolis, one of the more major cities that are in the area. Sure, but just like taking a property in the city and splitting like a single family into three units, you could split an acre property into a, you could make it into a small little subdivision. My my mother, she's a real estate agent, and she's crammed a lot of lots into a, onto an acre. You know, you, there's a ways to do, create single family living, but builders find it more, you know, it's better for their pockets to build what they're building now, which is, a, you know, the large square boxes that are highly tax because they have a lot of square footage living area and they don't take much they're not very hard to build they're not costly but they give people what they want which is a ginormous amount of space and so that's the trend in the new stuff okay well uh for those interested who may be interested in buying our viewers out there like what advice would you give them to say you know uh, be ready to compete on your offers um you know just but also be prepared, have your, you know, be pre-qualified with your loan officer Very and important. be already in contact with them. Don't go out shopping if you haven't contacted somebody about financing. Um, also, you know, just be prepared to lose out on a few contracts because there's lots of people, like on average, my mother for her, she's been getting 30 contracts per listing. I mean, just wow. an enormous wow. amount. So. But even the, the, the least attractive listings they're still getting oh, that's that's for sure yes you know, quote unquote I, I mean anything that's going on the market you're going to compete for there's nothing that's going to be sitting there for like longer than a week and if it has been sitting there longer than a week there's something really really wrong with it so you know are most of these you know i don't know how they track these but are most of these buyers coming from this area or are they coming from like out of town or there are there northerners or like new yorkers and bostonians moving south like I said in the beginning, there were a lot of younger military uh, earlier this year. I guess there was probably some they were transitioning them in, but 
it, it, everybody's buying. There's no just one group that's buying and one group that's not. If you have job stability, and you know that's pretty much all it takes to get the loan nowadays. So mm-hmm. as long as you've been employed for a couple of years and at least have a little bit of money for a down payment, you're going to be able to get financing. Wow. And how about? I know you're you're a residential mortgage group, but. Uh, have you you have any insight on like how this is impacting commercial real estate, or is it it's a whole different animal? I know, but not yes and no. But commercial starting to pick back up quite a bit. I mean, trying to find commercial space is extremely difficult right now to get the spaces you want. Um, everything is it's it's hot as well, it, especially with malls picking back up again and opening back up. Now that everything's opening up, it's you'll see. So what, retail commercial? We're talking about office commercial? I'm talking about all types of commercial. Really? Yeah. I didn't think people need the office space as much anymore. I thought that sector was really hurting because, you know, mobile and everybody can do their jobs from wherever. Okay, so if you're looking for that building sort of we work environment, yeah, there's a wealth of that. But let's say you're trying to be more like ground level office space or retail. It's very hard to find. Like the good spots right now are hard to find. The ones that are like you can walk onto the street. Or yes. From, from your office door. And because they were vacant for quite some time over the past year, but now, like now, all of a sudden, at the beginning of spring, they just started going just, away. Just like that. Because yeah. I, mean, I was looking for one, but it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that tells you right there. You guys look up for real estate. You got to get out. So let's say you're a seller. What advice would you give them? Um. You don't have to do much to prepare. You're at your home. You just, you a lot of times can go on the market, sell it as is. This buyer's going to do all the work to it, anyways. So you someone know, doesn't even need to go out and buy a can of paint anymore. Huh? I, you're in the driver's seat, and, but wow. don't don't inflate your ego and yourself too much to where your price is too out of whack in your head. You know, expect, you know, take a reasonable value you you know, for your home, and then. Maybe add fifty thousand to it, seventy five. It depends what they do. And and let's say we're talking about for homes under six hundred thousand. Okay. For homes, when you get into the higher bracket homes, you should have cash. So that's pretty much it. She was jumping from one to the other. Yeah, <laughs> but that's how you're gonna win. You know, if you're trying to, you may just you have to be, as a buyer, you have to be ready, and a seller. You kind of have to be ready to read a lot of contracts. That or ex- accept the value of, you know, that if you don't want to do work, you're going to get more for your house ever. Than so, wouldn't would it make sense for a, a seller to go out and get an appraisal in advance and be like, hey? No, not necessarily. No. I mean, it's going to happen anyway throughout the process. Because, yes, but. yes and if put appraisal and market value right now. Somebody, a good person to talk about for market value would be my mother. She's like, she's spot on, on, the show. on yeah. setting setting record highs for neighborhoods, especially lately. Um, she could tell you exactly how to get that price. Okay. She's like a guru at it. Yeah. I would most say. Uh, well, maybe we might have both of you guys on there. We can kind of like attack it from both. Right? You know, we have the agent here, we have the, the loan officer here. And yeah. We'll see. If this, we'll see how hot this market keeps going. I think this started probably what? Probably the end of the summer last year, mid to end summer, uh, fall. I think summer started, things were yeah. started ramping up. Huh? It did, and now it's it's pretty much full on. So people have been optimistic for quite some time now. Like you're not going to jump and start buying real estate unless you're feeling relatively optimistic. You know that, and get the fact that rates dropped so much that it actually allowed people to entertain the idea of wanting to own a home again or for the first time um you know, they just because all the talk about lower rates and you know people sort of looked over owning homes for a bit i you know when rates were in the fives and the sixes you know i, I a lot of people i put it off why you know it's cheaper to rent it's, like, but it's funny because not anymore like during my home buying time that was not bad like five or six was normal it wasn't that bad you know, yeah, no, that, that's insane right now but it, like i'm it's cheaper to re- uh, to buy to own a home than to rent a home now. It's just much more. You get way more you value, go. and your payment's going to be less. That makes sense. That is yours, huh? That is yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
that almost wraps us up. You're almost off the hook here, man. So we got to give you the shameless plug. Let's get you some, some people calling your phone. So, so we have a, a good audience of people. Most of them are adults, either homeowners or, or, or buyers, or, or it could be in a position to professionals, business owners. There's really our audience. Um, you know, give them a little something they can take home with them. Tell them what you want to hear, how they can find you, how you can help them, things like that. Well, if you want to talk about anything real estate or finance, just give me a call or a text. I mean, you can always reach me by text. My number is 703-505-3595. And, you know, if you just want to ask a question or anything, you know, I'm always here as a resource for information. There you go. And that's really what people want, a resource. Not necessarily just for information, but they want a resource. They want someone they can call that they know they give them answers to the questions that they actually need. You know, so... Uh, we're going to wrap up today, you know, it, it, it's hot, the DC market, the real estate market is hot. We got one of the, the top professionals in, in the mortgage business here, giving you spot on advice, uh, whether you're a buyer or a seller, if you guys have any, any real estate needs, give Justin a call or uh, reach out to him at the website, PRMG, that's Paramount Real Estate Mortgage Group. Um, we're done here today. All right? This is Friday with Friends. We'll be back uh, next week with some pretty awesome content and another great interview. Um, until then, if you have any questions or comments, if you don't want to answer, if you're not ready to call him, uh, you can put your questions or comments in the comment section here, and I'll make sure that he gets them. Uh, but please forward this to anyone that you think that may find value out of this video. You know, a buyer, a seller, say one question about real estate, uh, we can get your answers, your your, your questions answered. Uh, again, this is not just for lay people, this is for business people too. Everybody has real estate needs. It's a big part of our lives, it's a big part of the economy. Um, so we thought we, it was very important for us to touch on it. So thank you very much and we'll see you in a couple days. All right.